so I'm never one to look down upon ruminating in mystery. I try to do that as often as I can um, because it keeps your ideas fresh. Um, it keeps you from thinking you're ever going to finally figure something out. Um, but I still like to do metaphysics. I still like to try to figure it out, uh, though I admit from the very beginning that it'll never be final. Um, you know, it's always bound up in the historical generation of my culture. It's bound up in our scientific and empirical investigation into nature. Um, and I want my ongoing metaphysical speculative system to be in touch with the cultural needs of the time and with the scientific um, uh, experiential knowledge that's available at that time. Um, but I don't, when, when we say that we should um, look at what we know before we go speculating and, um, you know, inventing something like pan-experientialism, I, you know, I question what it is that we do know. Because when you do metaphysics, you're not so much um, trying to prove specific facts, um, you know, things that you could do experiments to test for. You're, you're really trying to define the context behind um, any picture of nature in which experiments could be done. So you're establishing a ground when you do metaphysics for the very possibility of knowing of epistemology. Um, so what do we really know right now before we speculate um, about the metaphysical nature of reality? We can't even talk about reality unless we're doing metaphysics. So, you know, the hard problem of consciousness, which you admit is basically a crisis, both in the sense that it's, um, it's confusing, but it's also opening up many doors, as you said. Uh, it's expanding the scope of the science, and you know, all of a sudden neuroscientists are studying Buddhism and meditation, um, something that you would think would have nothing to do with um, modern empirical investigation, and yet it seems, um, you know, I'm, I've got a book right here by Francisco Varela, um, a neuroscientist, about first-person views, trying to create a first-person science, really, um, such that we can correlate neurological data about, you know, like fMRIs, about how um, activity um, of neurons uh, in the brain works, correlate that with our trained first-person accounts of our own uh, subjective experience. Um, and, and this is an interesting shift in, in um, you know, Western science. The subject is coming back to the fore, whereas it had been in the background since um, Descartes, really, or, you know, Descartes still held the subject in high regard, but he opened up the door for mechanical science and study of nature, um, as though nature were something completely lacking um, an interior, a soul, feeling, perception, emotion of any kind, or value. Um, but, you know, Descartes still believed in the soul, he just didn't think it had anything to do with the body. And, uh, as the centuries went on, and science at least in the form of technology, became more and more triumphant, um, more and more in every part of our everyday lives. Um, the idea of the soul seemed less and less important. Um, you know, the body was understood by modern doctors as a machine with various systems and parts that could be uh, fixed in some cases when they break down. Um, but of course, We've got this hard problem of consciousness, which is the one remaining knot in uh, materialist science's attempt to explain the universe, to, to lay it all flat before us. Um, there's this question of how human experience is related to the brain. Um, and from a pan experientialist perspective, we no longer begin by assuming that the human subject is the only uh, 
subjectivity in the universe. Our metaphysics is such that subjectivity um, becomes just as fundamental as objectivity. Um, they become two poles of the process involved in the concrescence, which is a word that A. and Whitehead coined, in the concrescence of every actual entity. Every actual entity, which, you know, an actual entity is an atom, a molecule, a cell, an animal, um, a human being. An actual entity is um, an event. It's a, an event, a percipient event, is one of the ways that um, White had described it. It has a subjective enjoyment of its behavior. Um, so matter enjoys its becoming in time. Um, matter is no longer conceived of as a substance, just like consciousness or mind is no longer conceived of as a substance. Rather, mind and matter are seen as um, two ways of describing what this process of concrescence uh, does. Um, and what each actual entity does is inherit a past um, and aim for a particular future. Now, the more complex the entity in question is, the more possibilities are open to it. So it's not just um, overwhelmingly determined by its past with very little free choice. Uh, an atom is, is pretty much overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly determined. But a human being, um, while still you know, inheriting a past, is capable of realizing so many possibilities. The mental pull of a human actual entity is far more um, robust and vast than the mental pull of um, a single bacterium. Um, but, you know, when we avoid thinking of, of mind or matter as substances, we don't ask anymore whether or not the bacterium has consciousness, like this thing that would be added to its material um, behavior. You know, we wouldn't see consciousness as an epiphenomenon. We would see it as the phenomenal component of the material behavior, in the sense that the material behavior is both an exterior surface and an interior experience at once. Every body is both seen and seeing, and there is no seeing without being a body that can be seen as well. You know, like your eyes are seen, but they also see. And there, there could be no soul that exists without a body because the soul would have no way of contacting the world. You need a body to have perception and even thought, I would say. So from the pan-experientialist um, position or, or view, the relation between mind and body is not as though they were two separate substances. Um, somehow interacting with one another, um, they're instead, it's sort of like they are ways of understanding causality. The physical material pole of any actual entity is its, in, in Aristotle's terms, its material and its efficient causes, and the mental pole of any actual entity are its subject its uh, formal and final causes um, and I don't have enough time left in this video to uh, really break down the implications of this but I'll post a link to um, a site that explains Aristotle's four causes and um, maybe I'll do a part two and go into a little bit but um, yeah hopefully that clears up some things you're gonna have to let me know your name man uh, wasn't on your page or anything, but um, I'm definitely enjoying um, running through these ideas, and I, I like uh, the fact that you're challenging them too because it makes it more interesting. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Take it easy.